surprisingly still continuing to nurture me. Okay? And uh, one of them that stood out was the issue of uh, areas. Um, yes, it's an area that we've been engaging government on. There are a number of issues we've been engaging government on. But in my terms of difference, or in our terms of difference, I was tasked to focus on the accountability of COVID funds. But I can speak like Honorable has said uh, about these issues passionately. We haven't even mentioned the date. It's one of those glaring years, you know. But I just want to start uh, you know, to, to tag the honest nest. So, um, areas, before government didn't even have a strategy of how to manage our areas, as we speak right now with the engagement we've had with the Ministry of Finance, actually the Accountant General's Office, there's a strategy to manage our areas. In fact, even in this current budget, they have, before we used to allocate about 400 million, you know, I mean billion Uganda shillings. And uh, the official areas amount was around 4 trillion, around, but disputed as well, for more information on the Ministry of Finance. They're saying it was a bit higher than that, you know. And um, it's something that the Ministry, beginning with the current financial, has been keen on, at least to ensure that areas are addressed. So this is a discussion that we can improve on, but there are efforts being made at least. And, and we also improve on the validation. Oh, true, because very true. You cannot have four and have validation of close one from six people. True, very true. Students. Very true. You are speaking exactly what you are speaking in the engagement. But there's some efforts by government, at least they're not silent. Um, the other issue that was raised that I think was very pertinent, yes, is the issue of uh, rationalization. Mm. Whereas we keep on speaking about the expenditure bit that we are passionate about because it's the easy thing mm, yes. to speak about. Why? Because you can see. Mm. Whenever, remember whenever we get URA, they were always keen on tasking to tell us, yes, you want us to cut this tax. You know, it's easier to say it. Mm. They would always be keen on telling us, where do you propose we get this money? For example, the mobile money question, you know, people were keen on having this or how it's going to distort businesses, but they tasked us. And I remember we gave them about six alternatives who were keen on this because we're equally interested in where this money is going to come from. We know, and to be honest, I, I wish Honorable was here, the way they meet these targets, even where we stand, to be honest, especially during COVID, how resilient they were with how they stand is amazing and it's highly commendable. However, the discussion around the policies that would help us get more money is a question that we have always engaged on right now with, together with our colleagues at Siatini. And, um, while we're engaging on that, we're usually pushed to engage on the issue of these funds have been allocated, how, how has it been accountable? Now we're usually torn in between that. Yes, we can speak where it's going to come from, propose on how it's spent, but mostly what it has done. And like Honorable Flavia has said, it hurts hard to hear issues of workers that have not been paid, yet money is going back. It has been appropriated in a vigorous process. More has even been asked for but somehow it has gone back. So as members of parliament, these are questions that together with us we usually ask what happened. And the usual thing that I want you to now probe is the processes of our public procurements. The issue they usually use is that these procurements take forever. By the time a financial money has been released honorable for procurements in this quarter, quarter four, for infrastructure projects, what can they do honestly? It's, it's going to go back. It's too late. No, we let, me all give, know. Let, let me give you information. Yes, please. We have a challenge in this council. Because you know, PPDA the laws are very clear. If you if you, if you have a commit, for example, if it's planned for a road, you can uh, you can have, you can get a contractor, but pay to sign a contract. So you know, this money can be committed. But the challenge is PPDA also delays. I mean, the entities, not PPDA, the entities delay to procure contractors. They wait for the money to get onto the account. But once you have a, once you have a work plan, you can procure a contractor, but don't sign a contract. Don't commit government. Once the money comes, do commit. But still, the issue of late release also comes up. But they will tell you we did, we did not have the money. So I think on the other entities that you have to engage, PPDA should come on board. Reason areas of UNRWA. UNRWA has close to 894 billion and in payments to contractors. These are accruing interest. All these are coming back to the commitments of government. So PPDA should also be brought on board on one of those red areas that is seriously costing government. Yes. Wow, thank you for that information. Uh, on the issue of late releases, I will vouch for the Minister of Finance because in the in the recent past few years, they have endeavored to release it by the tenth. They've tried. They have really, really tried. They called the media and stipulate exactly. Again, the question comes of when it has been released, what then the question that you're raising. 
radicalizing. Then finally, on the issue of restructuring government order, I see the, 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 the mood with which you raised it, and it looks like it's all ordered. I'm glad you're sticking candidly. <laughs> Luckily, the media is not going to blow this out of proportion. But it's an issue that we were once bold enough to, to present before cabinet. I don't know where we got the boldness, but remember, Mr. Julius was very bold, like, ha, are we retaining our jobs? That's what I mean. He has, he has confronted, and the president is actually recent. So we were saying that this discussion has been pushed to the MDS and has left the critical areas. In the cabinet, it's still business as usual. In parliament, it's still business as usual. As civil society, we went ahead and started preparing our portion papers on program level, if you noticed. But when we would engage, we would realize less uptake. Why? The level of engagement and scrutiny was still at NTT level. Yes. Not even sector, NTT. They would look at each MDA coming through, they look at it, respond, the report is designed in. So we would struggle to try and say, hey, we present an issue at program level. We used to joke and say it's high level. We are speaking to ourselves. Yeah. Yet government is still where it is. So we were torn. Then we would go to NPA. But you have said we are moving to program. How come your assessment is still at MDA level? OPM, the same thing. So when we confronted this, we had so much evidence by the way, we had created the case of, of what we would say if this would happen. So he listened critically and, and uh, recommended the committee to follow up with that. Colleagues, since then we have given our recommendations, but I am sad to say, but nothing much has been done. I remember that document was written on classified, and unfortunately they cannot share it. But we are very, 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 very clear on what it is that we wanted. There was commitment from the head office of this process to begin. Where it is right now, to be honest, I cannot tell you. So it's a bit hard from where the will is not, which are from up, to be pushed down. But it's a thing that we can continually engage. And I know it will go a long way in helping us with the revenue question, how we spend our recurrent expenditure. Once it's institutionalized, it will help guide by itself how we are managing our government.